I still believe. I still believe. I still believe. Amen. If you would, grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. We're going to go to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew. Chapter 25. Keep on, Jayla. Matthew 25 and 29. Reading from the New Living Translation today. Matthew 25, 29. New Living Translation. And it reads like this. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given. And they will have an abundance. Somebody say abundance. But for those, from those who do nothing, even what little they have, will be taken away. Even what little they have will be taken away. Let's read Matthew 13. I'm going to read a few passages today. Matthew 13, verses 11 and 12. It's written, he replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. To those who listen, somebody say listen. This word listen right here, comes from the Greek word echo, which means to hold on to, to absorb. Hold on to, to absorb. Listening is not just an act of hearing. It is to absorb the information so that you may reflect what you have taken in. He says, listen to those who listen to my teaching. More understanding will be given. More understanding will be given. But, keep going, continues And they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. I want to share briefly. I want to read a couple more passages, but I want to share briefly today from this thought. Under new management. Can you just tell your neighbor I'm under new management? Under new management. Under new management. Um, We have been. Preparing and planning for this series for a while. Um, We've been looking at this topic matter of vision. Um, The snow kind of messed us up. It was supposed to be a four-week series, but it'll kind of be like a three-week series. But uh, there are four words that I want you to take out of this whole series. The first one is mentality. Everybody say mentality. And we talked about last week how vision is impacted by mentality because even though you may be inspired or feel something in your heart that you're called to do or have the ability to do it or purpose to do it, if you don't apply the right mentality to it, uh, which we talked about is capacity to make room for God to tell you that you are capable, the confidence, uh, the the, the aggression, the purpose-driven life, if you don't have the mentality uh, attached to the vision, it will never master the completion that God has called you to. Talked about mentality. We also talked about last week, though, we put it together, motion. Everybody say motion. We talked about the fact that God meets us in motion. That God is not looking for people who have great vision but don't do anything with it. That God meets you in the place of activity. That God meets you in a place where you actually start doing something. One of the biggest misconceptions about manifesting God's will in your life is that you will have all the answers before you start. But the reality of it is, if you're going to uh, really embody the vision that God has called you to, it's important that we understand that God is calling us to a place of motion. He wants to meet us on a journey to our destination. And so we look at those things and we take those into consideration when we start to talk about this third M that we're going to focus on today, which is management. Somebody say management. It is imperative that when we look at management, we understand how critical it is to vision in business and organizational leaders they constantly are evaluating the overall health of their organization and business um peter drucker peter drucker a great and famous management director or guy who is a management guru they say he says this quote management is doing the right things leadership is doing the right thing management i'm sorry is doing things right leadership is doing the right things management is doing things right Leadership is doing the right things. He suggests to us 
that leadership essentially provides direction. Uh, There's some things we talked about last week that I may be inspired to do but not convicted to do. That conviction means I take what's in my mind and attach it to my heart. That I shouldn't be convicted to do everything. You know, we all got friends who every month they got a new thing that they excited to do. Like they always inspired. And, and a good video can inspire some of us. Like all we got to do is get a good tearjerker video. And we're like, I'm joining that. I'm going that's my new cause, you know. Uh, you know, all you need is a good video. Some of y'all be on Facebook too much. You know, you see the Facebook videos, you be like, where, where do I sign up? I need to. Because great content can inspire us. But what we talked about is everything that you're inspired by is not necessarily your assignment to complete. And so the place from inspiration to conviction is a place where you start to assess, okay, is this my assignment? Is this my conviction? I'm inspired by what they're doing, but is it in my heart to be a part of this movement, this process? Um, And we talked about that process. And when we start to think about management, he suggests that what leadership does is provide direction. You got to know where we're going. But what management provides is the discipline to arrive. Management is the discipline to arrive. Last week I said this quote, and I wanted to make sure I refresh it for everybody. It said that the most difficult kind of discipline is discipline detached from a destination. When you, when you are trying to make sacrifices but you don't know why, when somebody say, hey, let's work out together this year, and you'd be like, okay, February 1st come around, you'd be like, I, I started, but my discipline wasn't attached to my heart. It was attached to somebody else's destination. You trying to get a relationship, they be like, you need a boo, because we need, you you know, because I got one now, so you need one too. So now you out searching for a boo. (laughs) That's my searching move. (laughs) You searching for, because you, but discipline, discipline detached from a destination. No discipline is easy to sustain when you don't know where you're going. But when you know what the sacrifice is feeding into, when you know I'm not doing this because it's going to provide this, when you know that this this uh, uh, restraint, this barrier, this boundary is contributing to this abundance. Look at what the scripture says. He says, he, he's talking about management and he tells them, but the product of management, good management, good discipline is abundance. There's an abundance waiting for all of us at the end of a disciplined journey. And, and I want to make sure we look at this today because what Peter Drucker suggests is that in any organization for health, they always determine something called the factors of production. Factors of production could be money. Do I have enough money to pull off my vision? Uh, do I have enough material to pull off my vision? Do I have enough of the resources? Resources are critical. But one of the things that he says is the most valuable aspect of achieving a vision in an organization from a business standpoint is quality management. He said without quality management, you will not produce at the level you are called to because it takes more than a great idea. It takes more than what you have in your back pocket. It takes management. Somebody say management. In this particular two passages, we see, I believe, God's heart for our journey and vision. And I think what he's communicating to us is the purpose of vision. In the first passage that we read, i got to give you the backdrop. Some of you have heard me preach on the total total passage before uh, where there's this analogy being given by Jesus. Jesus is trying to explain the way the kingdom works. And he talks about this king who gives riches or gifts to these uh, servants. And he comes back and says, what did you do with what I gave you? Well, one doubled what he had, another one doubled what he had. But one said, I did nothing with what you gave me. And, and that's where we pick the passage up in, in, in the passage, Matthew 25. We, we pick it up in a place where the writer is helping us, Jesus is helping us to understand that, that G- God is disappointed in us when we mismanage what he's given us. When we do not produce with what he's given us. Then another passage we see Jesus talking and the same conversation has kind of happened. He said, he said, there are people who listen to what I'm saying, but they're really not listening. And, and, and for those who have little It may not be because the devil took it away. It may be because God took it away. We we love to highlight the parts of God. We are enamored with the parts of God in the kingdom that are constantly giving to us. But, but, But the reality of it is these two passages highlight a God that not only gives but also takes away. Okay. It's tough. I see some of y'all looking at me like I don't like this one. Because inspiration coupled with inactivity is the starting point for insufficiency. Okay, let me talk to y'all for a second. Inspiration 
coupled with inactivity is the starting point for insufficiency. What is insufficiency? The lack of something. I don't have enough. I don't have enough resources. And a lot of times we love to come to church and blame everything on the devil. Well, the devil busy. He just stole my blessing. He just stole. And then we say stuff in church like we taking it back. No, you, you ain't going to take nothing back because sometimes the devil ain't had nothing to do with it. God was disappointed in your mismanagement. So what he said was if you're not going to use it, you lose it. What is the part of God we won't like to talk about? Just, I'm just reading the Bible. This is what Jesus says. Jesus says that, that there, are, there are people, he was trying to get us to understand the kingdom, who have been giving something from their father. They've done nothing with it. So take what they have and give it to the one to do something. Because watch this. God never wastes a gift. He relocates it. He doesn't just let it fall. I, you know, I used to say when I was preaching all the time that a whole bunch of people were going to die with. Unri- you know, anybody heard that quote before? A whole bunch of the, the richest place in the world is the grave site because people have died with unwritten vision. I, after reading this passage and praying, I believe God gave me a different revelation. He said, I'm not wasting no gifts on y'all. He said that the, the graveyard is not the richest place. What they didn't use, I'm going to bless somebody else. And some of us are wondering, why is it that they got the opportunity? Why is it that they're doing this? Why is it that they're doing that? Maybe it's not because because they're better maybe it's just because God met them in motion and they managed what they had instead of complaining about what they didn't we're not supposed to be just waiting on God to give us everything he said part of what I'm looking for is your ability to manage what you already have management is critical to our ability let's look at some of the gifts that many of us may have, we don't even know we have. All types of gifts that God gives us. Some of us have the gift of, of resources. Or let's go with talent. Let's start with talent. Any talented people in the room? Okay, nobody. All right, good. God is good. <laughs> talent is a gift that God gives. And, and, and you know how the enemy often attacks talent? With insecurity. So you create in private but never release in public. Some of the most talented people I know. I joke with people all the time. You know, before I pastored, I had the opportunity to sing and travel the country and travel internationally. And, and I have a couple people who are really close to me who I know by the grace of God are better singers than me. Let me tell you something. I am a C plus at best. They are A minuses on they, I'm, These people can sing. I said, why don't you release something? And they said, man, people are going, I don't, I don't like it. People going to have something to say. I said, people going to have something to say regardless. But talent is often attacked by insecurity. Let's go to another one. Talent God gives and we mismanage it. Opportunity. I want to read one more passage for you on this one. Let's go to Ephesians, Tyran 5. Ephesians 5, verses 15 through 17. It reads like this. So be careful how you live. I didn't say this word. I don't want y'all to go home and say Vernon said it. God said it. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Why? Because you make the most of every what? Make the most of every opportunity. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord is is, is trying to do. Look at what he says. He says, some of us are just mismanaging opportunities. People say, hey, you know, I want you to go say say hey to so-and-so. And and you're like, I don't want to meet no new people. Opportunity. Some of y'all been praying to God, God, do it. God, show up. God, open a door. And you mess around with your attitude and don't want to meet nobody new. Somebody's honest with you and you're like, I don't like their attitude. No, they were just being truthful. The stuff won't good. And if you want to be better, you need some people who are willing to be honest. And you got opportunities and you are squandering them. Oh, I know y'all ain't coming back next Sunday. We're going to have a whole bunch of seats next week. Wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. Some of y'all got wisdom sitting around you. One of the things I tell the marriage group all the time when we meet, or the couples group, rather, I tell them all the time that one of the greatest gifts that me and Ashley ever got when we got married was just people around us who would give us wisdom. That we didn't have to suffer in silence. That we didn't have to be confused together. You know, ain't nothing worse than two confused people trying to work through something that ain't never done it before. And that's how we live our lives. I don't know. You don't know. But we just going to figure it out. How? Where we going, Sway? How, Sway? How? <laughs> Where we figuring it out at? And you got wisdom. And this has been one of the attacks on culture is to divide generations. So you got one generation that says, no, none of them want to listen. And you got another generation saying, I don't feel like talking to them. 
Because all I want to do is text. I don't want to go take nobody to coffee. I don't want to have a conversation. I just want to text people. I know I'm preaching. Y'all ain't got to say amen. And there's wisdom around you, and you are neglecting it. And then you're saying, God, where are you? He said, I'm in the wisdom. Okay, let me go on to the next one. Some of you have get the, get the gift of wealth. <laughs> here's, the, here's the funny part. Like, most of the people in the room was like, well, not me. That ain't me. <laughs> now, I know he ain't talking to me on that one. He been stepping on my toes on the last three. But he ain't talking to me on this one. <laughs> you be like, looking down your row, like, who, who looking like they need to find out who what opportunities might be in the room? Who clapped on that one? <laughs> Why? No, opp- opportunity of wealth. And wealth is not necessarily just mean, guys, like you have, a, you know, a certain amount. But some of us have a, a stability. Some of us have a financial freedom that other people don't have, but you selfish. You look cute every week. Oh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. You you gotta, you ain't you ain't replicated an outfit since we started the church. They might remember this from January 2016. Nobody remember what you wore last January? I can't wear that again. But you got people who are dealing with life crises and people who are dealing with struggles, and you say, God, would bless me more. And God said, No, you're not using what you have the way I called you to have it. Some mismanagement. Some of us have education. You got the information, but you ain't sharing it with nobody. You are, you are a lazy sharer of information and wisdom. You got a degree, but you ain't helping nobody else who couldn't afford to go to college. We have a gift, but we're mismanaging it. Some of us have the gift of ideas. I'm going to move through these last ones quickly. Uh, uh, ideas, and you're not sharing them. Some of us have the gift of relationships. Not, I mean, like. I have people that care about me that I can reach out to, that I can pull from. Some of us have the gift of companionship, but we don't treat our person like it. Whoa, buddy. We got somebody, but we don't treat them like they're a gift. We treat them like they're a burden. And you got a whole bunch of people here who wish they had somebody. I thought I was going to get more amens on that one. And you walking around here feeling like, I don't even want to go home. God said, I have gifted you with companionship, but you are not managing it well. Some of us have the gift of singleness. That's a gift too. See, I didn't want to clap. I knew I was going to catch y'all. I knew I was going to catch y'all. It was like, ah, uh-uh, I was shouting on the last one. God poured out blessings of companionship. And God says, some of you are single and you have the opportunity to do things and see the world and experience life in a way that some of us can't make decisions with our money by ourselves if we're doing it right. And you have opportunity, but you are mismanaging it. You mismanage it looking at everybody else's Instagram account. And God said, while you have the opportunity to live life. And then here's the, here's the last one I want to share. Some of us have favor. Some of us have favor. Some of us, if we just be honest, some of the things we've experienced in life have been unusual favor. Unusual favor. You got the job off of favor and got the nerve to be complaining about it every week. You, you know your degree didn't match it. You know that your education. You, some of y'all got opportunities without a degree. And you're like, man, I'm working this good dog. Management. God said, and for those who use and manage well what they're given, I'll give more to. He even uses the word abundance. But for those who mismanage, even what they have will be taken away. I want to think about this today in four areas because I believe we all can practically leave this room and be better about how we manage our lives. Four areas that I think will inspire all of us to start to think about our life and process better. The first one is the problem. Everybody say the problem. It is necessary to assess what are some of the problems I'm having in my life. Now, problem is a heavy word, uh, but it was the only other P because the rest of them are P's, so I needed four P's. <laughs> Preachers don't be trying to tell y'all the truth. I'm going to tell y'all the truth. Sometimes we've just been struggling to get another letter. Like, come on. <laughs> come on, Jesus, give me another one. Tell the truth. The problem. 
that, that, that there's something in my life that at every season I should be improving in. That good management means that, 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 that in every season there is a problem area. That does not mean that we're not progressing. It just means that based on the new level or standard in which we're operating, that there should be a new area that we should be assessing to grow. If you are a person who, who doesn't need to grow anymore, you're not really living at all. Every one of us should be able to assess at what place I'm at in my life, what is one of the problem areas of my life. Maybe in my last season, it was, was discipline with spending, and maybe in this year, it's discipline in my relationship. Maybe it's not discipline in relationship. Maybe it's discipline in my attitude. Maybe it's not discipline in my attitude. Maybe it's discipline in my workout habits. Maybe it's discipline in my overall health. Maybe it's discipline in my study habits. I don't know what it is for you, but there is an area. There is an area. It could be communication. It could be saving. It could, be, it could be something that is personal, but you got to find out what in this season of my life, what area is God calling me to address for production and progressiveness? There's always an area. Here's, I said this, uh, I think for New Year's Eve service, I can't remember, but I just want to reflect on it for a moment because I said the beauty of God is the closer I get to him is not just about understanding him, but the closer I get to God, the more he reveals to me about me. That part of the beauty of God is that the closer I get to him, I start finding out areas in me that are not as qualitative or as disciplined or as perspective. I, I thought I was good in here, but then I got closer to God and realized there's some stuff I got to work on. There's always an area. So we got to first address and be honest with ourselves about where is God calling me? to address some areas in my life, some problem areas. But here's the second thing, because every problem has a principle attached to it. There is nothing that God wants you to go through, and he's not trying to install a principle into your life. I believe there is no struggle that God is not trying to get the glory out of. He says all things work to the good of those who what? So all things. He didn't say some things. He didn't say a few things. He didn't say three-fourths. He said all things, which means that there's a principle in every problem. And when we start to think about principle, it's important that we start to ask ourselves, God, if I'm going to advance, what do you want me to be learning now? One of the greatest struggles of many of us who are trying to go through this journey called life, manifest vision, right, is that we are busy trying to learn the, the lessons of somebody else's journey. We are consumed with People, you know, we got friends, and they talking about what they working on, and so now we start working on what they working on. That may not be my. <laughs> that one. Come on, can y'all be honest? Like you done had a few conversations already between December and January that's been like, let's work on this together. What if that's not my area? Now I'm investing time working on something I'm strong at. I'll give you a great example. I got a, a couple of good friends who, um, about a year ago, said, "Hey, Vernon, we want to start working out with you." Right? You know. Um, we want to start working out. And I was like, cool, you know, no problem. I invited them to the gym, right? So I'm like, let's rock, you know. So they come to the gym, and we start working out. The problem was I had been consistent at the gym life for about a couple years. I ain't bragging. I'm just saying, you know, I had, you know, got a little routine. You know what I'm saying? I was kind of, I was all right. Now, what started to happen was in the process of them trying to do my workouts, they were getting lightheaded. One threw up. And I'm sitting here like, no, I'm slowing down. Somebody going to catch it on this side. I'm slowing down trying to help you live out a lesson that I got in the last season. And you trying to, to do something that's attached to my health and my life that's really maybe not attached to what God wants you to work on in this season. And sometimes you look up and you spent your whole year working on somebody else's life lesson, but you still in the same place in God's eyes because what he wanted, the principle he wanted you to get, you ain't even worked on. What, what principle is God trying to reveal to you in this season to improve upon? What principle? What habit? What behavior? And, and, and that we, we are all different. That's why we can't preach sermons that are blanket for people all the time and tell them your, your, your thing going to be your thing and your thing. No, you got to go spend some time with God. And that's why when we start this fast today, I'm praying that you spend time with God and you spend time not just talking but listening. 
God, what principle do you want me to be applying to my life? But here's the one. Here's the one we missed. Tap your neighbor and say, this is the one. This is the one we missed. This is the one we missed. This is the one we missed. Because after you assess the problem area of your life, after you assess the principle that God is trying to reveal to you, you got to then put it into practice. Somebody say practice. Watch this. Because God does not reward revelation. He rewards application. let that sit that's like some good chicken put the seasoning on it you just gotta let it maybe marinate for a second i know that's that's kind of childish because y'all can't eat it for seven days but he does not look at what the scripture says the scripture says he said there are people that i've given gifts to jesus is using this analogy to understand the kingdom of god and he said and because they did not do anything with what i gave them i took away so what he's looking for is not just an understanding. But, but look at the other passage. He said to those who listen, that Greek word echo, which means to absorb, to hold it. So for those who are listening, I will give more. For those who are not, I will take away. He's saying it's more than just understanding revelation. You got to start applying some principles to your life. My prayer for us this year is that we are not just people who understand what we need to work on. But we actually start working on it. Because some of us spent all of 2016 saying, I know I need to work on that. That's one of my, he's still working on me. That's one of my problem areas. And God said, but when are you going to stop using that as an excuse? And when are you going to move from principle to practice? When are you going to move from revelation to application? When are you going to start saying God has invested me with too much information and too much wisdom and too many ideas and too many opportunities for me to keep squandering them all because I got a revelation about what I need to improve upon the discipline that he's calling me to, but I haven't applied it to my life yet. He says you got to put some things in practice. Somebody say practice. Here's the last thing, though. He tells us that if we can do that, we get the promotion. One guy, if you read the whole passage, he not only got what the other guy didn't have, he said, but he appointed them to a place that they had not been before. They went from slaves to sharing in his level of leadership. Read the whole passage. He promoted them. We see all throughout the Bible, when Daniel honored God, he was promoted. When David honored God, he was promoted. That God responds to discipline but not just revelation, but application. I want to read one last passage for you. We're going to be done. Watch this. Go to, go to Hebrews 12 for me. Hebrews 12, 5 through 13. Hebrews 12, 5 through 13. What was the wrong one? Go to Hebrews 12. I know I put, I gave y'all 11. Don't judge them, y'all. I gave them chapter 11. Go to 12 for me. Oh, man. Hebrews 12. I'm going to start reading verse 5. It reads, And have you gotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. Somebody say discipline. I love this part, verse 5. And don't give up when the Lord corrects you. This is Hebrews 12, verse 5. Hebrews 12, verse 5. He says, and don't give up when God corrects you. Don't, don't, Don't be so sensitive that God can't help you manage your life. Don't, don't, don't be so easily offended that when, when, when God starts to reveal, watch this, look at the different gifts. Because sometimes God is not going to come to you in a deep voice. Sometimes God going to come to you through a person sitting on your row who has enough wisdom. They say, I've been where you've been. And I ain't saying y'all should just be walking around like, I know I just met you, but you need to get your life together. Like, I ain't saying that. <laughs> but sometimes there are people around you, there are people in your small groups. There are people on your ministry team that are seeing where you're at. Sometimes God will reveal things to you through honesty. It's an opportunity. It's wisdom to manage your life better. But you got to take it. Let's keep going. Verse 6. For the Lord disciplines those he loves. And he punishes each one he accepts as child. And as you endure the divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Who ever heard of a child who was never disciplined by his father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all his children, it means you are illegitimate and not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more? 
to the discipline of the father of our spirit who will live forever. For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years doing the best they knew how. That's my testimony. I'm just doing the best I know how, y'all. Hoping my children end up okay. (laughs) But God's discipline is always good for us. So that we might share in his holiness. Okay, this is the good part. This is the good part. I'm going to finish it up with this. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful. It's your favorite verse, ain't it, Sierra? No discipline. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this day. So take new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. That's, that, that preaches right there by itself. I want to end with this because management, let's go back to what Peter Drucker said. He said management is doing not just the right things, that's leadership, but doing things right. It means I know where I'm going. Leadership charts my course, my destination. But it is imperative that I also get that I got to do things the right way. There has to be a discipline attached to the journey. And I believe today that this passage in Hebrews is directly what God wants us to understand. Some of us are in the season of our life where God is disciplining us in ways that we don't enjoy. He's disciplining you in a way that you don't appreciate. Uh, uh, and make it plain like this, and I'm going to be done. I grew up with a father who, um, who disciplined me. You know, I don't know if anybody worked for the people, so I can't. I grew up with a father who disciplined me. I don't know about y'all. I got beatings. Anybody got beatings? He loved me, I think. <laughs> and, um, and it's amazing because my father um, would, would get to the end of the whooping. And, and, and somebody can testify to this. They would say something that would irk your nerve. You sitting there crying. It's the long cry, too. I'm talking about the one where you lose your breath. I'm talking about, <laughs> I'll be one of those. And my daddy would tell me, he would walk on over, put his arm around me, and he'd say, Vernon, I did it because I love you. What kind of foolish love is this that you will put me in that type of pain and then tell me you love me? I don't believe you. But now that I'm a little older, I can appreciate the fact that every now and then he didn't just let me do things my way because he understood I needed something that I couldn't see yet. And if you would ever survive the process of discipline, God said, I'm going to show you how to manage your relationships. I'm going to show you how to manage your resources. I'm going to show you how to manage your life so that when you get to the end, there is a harvest waiting for you. Somebody say abundant. He said, I want you to have some stuff. I want you to have abundantly. Look at what the scripture says. Exceedingly and abundantly above all. But I got to attach some discipline to my life. I got to manage some relationships. I got to manage some opportunities. I got to manage some things in my life. And I cannot expect God to keep giving if I'm not doing anything with what I got. He says, I'm making you a better manager this year. And I will give based on how you manage. Some of us have been asking God for more. And God says, manage what you have. You can stand on your feet all across the room.